Welcome to Stewardology, a podcast where two worlds collide. In this show, financial advisor Tim Russell and Reverend Drew Geisey come together to explore the intersection of financial stewardship and theology. Their unique perspectives help Christians and churches understand and apply a biblical framework for everyday financial decisions so Christians everywhere can improve and strengthen their walk with Christ through biblical stewardship. Before we get started, we just wanted you to know that the topics discussed in this podcast are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific investment advice or recommendations. Investing and investment strategies involve risk, including the potential loss principle. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Securities and advisory services are offered through Genius Wealth Management, member FINRA and SIPC. Without further ado, here are your hosts, Tim Russell and Drew Geisey. I'm Tim Russell. And I'm Pastor Drew Geisey. And we welcome you to episode 61 of The Stewardology Podcast. Well, guys, and I mean guys, because we got Tyler in on this on this episode with us. It is almost here. It's that time of the year that many of us gather under one roof and typically leave a pound or two heavier than when we arrived. <laughs> and of course, you know what I'm talking about. It's that great time, which we all love to celebrate with friends and family, and that's Thanksgiving time. And today we're going to be sharing what we are thankful for and possibly even become somewhat sentimental as we reminisce over this past year. It's always, always good to give thanks. I love what we see in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. It says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It is good to know that this verse, we see it's an imperative in there. And Tim, I know that you're a student of the Word and a student of the original languages. So to the best, right off the top of your head, what's an imperative mean? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a command. This is, this is not a suggestion. It's not a subjunctive, right? It, it would be nice for you right. maybe to consider or think about giving thanks at some point in the future. This is like, thou shalt. So give so, thanks. It's a command. So, that's what, so Paul is saying what here? Yeah. Give thanks. You are commanded to give thanks, not just when the going is good, not just when things are going well. But in all circumstances. Tim, that's hard. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, you you know, last week I taught in Sunday school on Romans chapter 5. And there's this passage in Romans chapter 5, which talks about we rejoice in sufferings. And you know the difference between rejoicing in sufferings as a believer and enduring sufferings as an unbeliever? Hope. Yeah. Because what we know about rejoicing in sufferings is that all of the sufferings of the believer is done under the gracious hand of God and works out for our good and for his glory. But all of the sufferings of those who are not in Christ is simply a foretaste, an appetizer of what awaits them. That That is so well said. And, that, and we see that. Here, we are commanded to give thanks in all circumstances, yes. everything, even those troublesome times. So it's not to be an option, but it's to be a lifestyle. And I'm going to be honest, sometimes that's hard, Tim. We all know that. It's hard. Mm. But it, what I see here as part of this imperative is it needs to be a part of our DNA so that whatever happens in our life, the bad as much as the good things that happen – We are to be thankful and give thanks to the Lord. So to me, during those difficult times, life has really hit some hard blows over the years. And I can say just for myself, pastoring is difficult. I have gone through some pretty difficult days. Myself, my family, uh, my wife, as she's walked through this. And I'll even say uh, a little over 10 years ago, my wife and I, we had that C word come into our home, that cancer word. And it was like a sucker punch that just roundabout came out of nowhere and took us out and knocked the, knocked the wind out of us. But it doesn't change the fact that in all things, All things, all circumstances, we are to be thankful to God and give thanks to the Lord for what he is doing 
and what he is allowing in our lives. And we read that this is the will of God. So today, we're going to take some time and we're going to share what we are thankful for. And we want to do this for a couple reasons. First, we want you to know a little bit more about who we are and what we're about. We want each of us, we, we want to be more vocal about Thanksgiving. When we were thinking about this episode, we realized that we ourselves need to express Thanksgiving in a greater way because that's a command that we see in Scripture. And then also, our goal was for this this episode to be a little contagious during this holiday time, that it would cause you to think about what you're thankful for, and maybe this could be a catalyst to begin a wave of thankfulness coming from the Lord's people during this holiday time. So what are we as a stewardology team? What are we thankful for? And Tim, I want you to start us off, get, start us off with that thankfulness journey in, in your life over this last year plus. So there is so much to be thankful for this year. Mm, amen in, to that. In my, my life, my family, um, and even work and church and things like that. I, I think the first thing that I have to express thanks to the Lord for is um, just his goodness and kindness to me in my walk with him this year. Mm. I have gone through a number of ups and downs in my walk with the Lord over the years. And uh, the Lord has really done a remarkable work in showing to me his immense goodness, kindness, and patience. And I've been so grateful for um, godly uh, Christian pastors and authors who have helped me to see and to get a glimpse of of our great God. Mm. Um, things like uh, R.C. Sproul and uh, you know his book uh, on the holiness of God, and I've just been so grateful for John Piper and it's something simple like the Ask Pastor John podcast, which has been such a blessing to my own soul. And you share that, Tim, sometimes with the entire working mm. team here. You'll you'll yeah, hear something, yeah. a clip or something, and you'll say, hey, guys, you need to listen to this. Yeah, yeah. So it's just so profoundly helpful. So I, I've been I've been really grateful for that. But on a family side, you know, I've I've been married now for this was our 19th year of of marriage. Uh, we have two teenage boys and uh, my wife, Christine, uh, this year she has really seen her business grow. She is a midwife and a lot of what she does is serving inside the Amish community. She, she does a number of you know, what, what they call Englishers, not Amish, and then the Amish as well. Englishers. That's yeah. an interesting term. Not heard that before. So uh, she's now caught, I think, 150-ish babies. Uh, she was out this morning, got called out, and had a birth uh, this morning. Wow. Um, just that absolutely beautiful birth. She loves, loves, loves helping these moms with bringing in their, their babies into this world. It's just an absolute delight. COVID has been good to her, huh? Uh how do I answer that? Yeah. <laughs> so I say that COVID, a little tongue in cheek. COVID, COVID has, has made her work far, far more complicated. Really? Far more complicated. Mm. Just, just because, uh, well, uh, you know, within the Amish world, they, they don't deal with, they, they don't listen to the CDC. Makes sense. They, they do what they want to do. And, they have their own world. And, and what's amazing is that you would expect that a, a non mass non-social distanced, you know, uh, group of individuals would be the ones hit hardest by COVID and have the most deaths. <laughs> They, it went hit hit them last year. Uh, they lost probably in our area five people, all elderly. Really, and they haven't wow. had COVID since. Wow, it's just been amazing. Anyway, so but lots yeah, of babies. But well, yeah. But then what happens with COVID is that it, it push it pushes women outside of the hospital environment seeking to do home births, which is what my wife does. So because of that, she has had a huge influx of of people leaving those hospital systems where they're mm. going to force them to wear a mask throughout the entire uh, labor and delivery process, or they're not going to allow in their their doula, which is like a birth coach, or their husband, or their mother in law, or just just one. They can't have the people there that they want to have there. So sure. um, that has made it more complicated too. 
And and then how do you handle like when one of her English patients has COVID? Like how do you handle that? Yeah. Um, because you know, are, are you going to be at risk and you know serving your other patients? Sure. So it, it definitely does complicate some things. But it's been it's been really wonderful. She's you know her she has set up a clinic this year, moved out of our house into a, a like a like a one bedroom apartment on an Amish home and then from there she outgrew that within 4 months and moved into a two bedroom place so you know we're seeing her uh, her practice grow she used to be just the only person there now she's got two other midwives working with her wonderful and she's got a whole number of assistants she's got three or four students right now that she's teaching that's wonderful so just a lot of really cool things happening there so wow. yeah god's been really good to to her and to the whole uh baby world that's just been that's been exciting uh, my my oldest son josh uh he is 17 years old and you know i haven't talked about josh much on this podcast um Josh has not been living with us for the last almost four years or more. Yeah, my son has has autism, and uh, he he has had some significant emotional and behavioral problems, um, and it got to the point where it just was unsafe for him and for us inside the home. Just a really painful yeah. spot in our lives. It was obviously very painful for Josh. Josh was, he's an in, in, enormously smart child. Definitely. He, he knows so much and yet understands or understood so little, especially mm. about his faith. Mm. And in the beginning, before COVID really got going, we ended up making a decision to put him in a place called the Allegheny Boys Camp, which is a Mennonite run wilderness residential Christian therapeutic camp or, or, or wilderness center. camp. Yeah. So it's, it, he lives in the woods in the mountains of Maryland with no power or electricity in tents. Wow. Year round. I think all teenagers need to go through that. 165 days a year. Yes. Uh, I, I would agree with that. Uh, no electronics. In fact, when he writes to us and he is required to write to us at least on a weekly basis, it is with a pen and paper. Wow. Old you school. You would not believe how this child's handwriting has has totally transformed because they will make him rewrite letters that are not legible. Very cool to them. And then we write letters back or we can send him emails. And, wow. Um, you know, he comes home for home visits every now and again. It's just been really a, a neat experience. And the fact that it's Christian run sure. has been so helpful. So he's with a group of 10 other boys and he's got, they, they call them chiefs, which is like the counselors who are with them. Uh, and, and like these guys, they're, they're chopping wood. They're, they're, they're having lots of fun. They're doing fun things and adventurous things and they're getting work done and they're learning the value of good hard work and they're learning the value of, of a job well done. Yeah. And they're learning like practical, tactical things like, you know, how do you how do you chop down a tree safely or how how do you carve a spoon or how do you build a a big wooden superstructure for a tent which they have to replace every couple every couple of years and they have multiple tents on their campsite they're doing stuff they're learning a lot it's a very alternative kind of learning environment so uh he's actually just graduated from that uh on november 17th which is like what just a couple days before this episode airs he graduates from the allegheny boys camp and is now going to be home full time and i'm really excited about that i'm Amen. looking forward to what god has for him and what's amazing and what i'm most thankful for is just the fact that god has done such a remarkable work in his heart amen Be- before he went to camp he would have told you god doesn't exist and if he does he's evil mm. today he's actually very much interested in pursuing a ministry type of a job wow some something as maybe a pastor or or some other form uh he's He's very much interested in that and has been doing a lot of uh, good things there. So uh, obviously a lot yet to be determined sure. with him, and time will tell as he moves in home. But sure. uh, we're really excited for what God has in store. Amen. Then our other son, David, he's uh, 15. He, he got his first job. Uh, he's now milking cows. Wow. So our 15-year-old has a bike. Uh, it's like a little one of those e-bikes. He mm-hmm. rides to work at like 3.30 in the morning. Say what? 
Uh, three three forty five. He gets he's got to be there at four o'clock. He gets up the same time Tyler does to go milk cows, and, and he doesn't do it every day. It does a couple times a month, but then he also goes and does feeding and milk in the afternoon. And um, yeah, he's uh, he's just been really responsible. He's been Very playing cool. violin now since he was in kindergarten, and that's Very been really cool. exciting to see him blossom. And I just really enjoy watching to see how he loves serving others. You know, he he actually loves helping out with the kids at church mm. and our, our pastor has a number of grandkids like like more than 30 i think there's so many grandkids. wow well his wife watches all of these grandkids well not all of them but you know the ones that are available and around um and david will go and help out with that and it's so funny because he's now become the pied piper at church all of the little kids look up and idolize david they think Uh-oh. he's the coolest thing and like at the at church yesterday we had this uh, big church event and um i i saw these kids going over and like these little kids grabbing david and dragging him outside by the hand so they can go play with him outside rolling around in the field and wow. just having a having a blast so i just love seeing uh him serve others and become a godly young man. You know, um, at work, you know, we've got what three companies here, life financial beacon tax and life Institute, Mm -hmm. uh, life Institute being our not for profit organization. Uh, and one of the big things that happened this year is there was a big transition. Yeah, there was, uh, I went from being the vice president of all three of those organizations to where today I am the president of all of these organizations, as we call here in the office, El Capitan. El Capitano. Yeah, um, you, you probably, uh, listening to this, you probably know uh, Roy, my father, founded this company uh, back in 1978. And uh, he has been working in this company and on this company for the last 40 plus years. It's been his baby. He's he's loved being able to be a part of that. And he, he still is a part of it. Yes. But as part of the transition plan for this company to continue on into the next generation, I'm, I'm taking over more and more of the responsibility to the point where I'm now the president of the company. And he's able to focus on the projects and things that he enjoys most mm-hmm. and uh, that he's, he's really good at and can help us and help me move he, the needle. He loves research. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, been, he's been fantastic. So I I've, I've just greatly appreciate his wisdom and care. Definitely. And, you know, I've also been really busy in ministry things. Uh, this year, I was asked to take over our church's Harvest ministry. And if you're not familiar with the group Harvest USA, I would strongly encourage you to look them up. They are a ministry in the Philadelphia area that serves churches nationwide, and I, I would imagine around the world, yeah. with understanding how to care for those dealing with sexual brokenness. And if you know anything about our society, you know that that has become an even bigger challenge. And what I'm what I'm really excited about seeing is that our our mission at uh, our our church's harvest is to help men not just overcome pornography or whatever addictions that they're struggling with or brokenness they're dealing with. Our mission is to help them become more like Christ. Mm. Because if if you can stop looking at pornography and you still haven't made Christ the center of your life, like, you're missing the whole show. Um, you you can stop look at pornography and you can still go to hell. Yeah, like it, it's too short of a goal to have them just stop there. We definitely want that, but we want them to grow in their relationship with Christ. And the other thing that I'm, I'm really excited about helping our guys understand is that that pornography, sexual brokenness, is a worship dysfunction more than anything else. Yeah, well said. So helping them realign, re-engage with worship as a lifestyle that is geared towards God and that can help them to have the joy fueled obedience to say no to temptation and to say yes to the greater joy that is available to them. All right. Well, that's about it for, for me. Um, Tyler, why don't we pass this over to you? I, you've had a pretty calm, uh, uneventful year, right? <laughs> totally calm. Definitely not the words I would use to, to uh, describe this year, but it's been, it's been pretty crazy, but also really great and satisfying and challenging 
and just awesome. Uh, I got married twice, which is weird to say. Wow. Uh, really just once, but he, we, uh, he liked, he liked her so much. He married her twice. <laughs> yeah. That's what I tell her. Um, <laughs> first one didn't work. Try it again. Now my wife is asking me to remarry her. You know that Tyler. <laughs> it's all those wedding gifts, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm in cash, cash. But way back in January, my now wife and I decided to move our wedding, uh, up to May, which originally was planned for September because of some family health issues. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on, but we still had, uh, we had our celebrate or our wedding ceremony in May. We had a celebration in September, which was awesome. So, uh, it's just fun. I got married twice in one year, but it's been a blessing just learning how to love Sarah, like Christ loves the church and what a divine task that is. And mm. I know there's going to be times for me where it's difficult, right? But, uh, I'm just so thankful that God has given me such an incredible partner in crime. <laughs> she, she's an easy one to love. You know that, Tyler. <laughs> oh, she's great. Um, but, you know, it's just interesting. We're trying to implement right now uh, one of the big challenges are like the many financial to-dos, right, for those that are newly married, thinking about life insurance and investing and all the stuff you kind of have to do. And there's a lot to pay attention to, but I know resources like this podcast in particular make it easier uh, to help us get through those. But after we got married, we went through, uh, we went out West. We took a trip on a, a honeymoon to see God's creation, like Zion national park, beautiful Bryce Canyon, grand Canyon, all those mm. big rocks out West that are just so beautiful. Gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a landscape photographer too. So I just, I just ate that all up. She was funny. She had to drag me along the trails a couple times. Like, all right, we got to, we got to keep going. Keep walking. <laughs> uh, I feel your wife's pain. <laughs> yeah. So that's, uh, that's me. But ministry is going great. Um, it's one of the things I'm really passionate about is just helping people know and love God even more. So uh, the other podcast I'm involved with, you know, we're getting close to 100 episodes, and we've partnered with ministries like Crossway, Banner of Truth, Ligonier, Nine Marks, and more just to help bring resources to people that don't you know, know about these resources or don't have access to them. So it's been a lot of fun. We've talked uh, to many people that have expressed that they have grown in their faith through our discussions, which blows my mind because who would be willing to sit there and listen to my voice for an hour? It just doesn't make sense to me, right? Your wife. <laughs> your wife. Yeah, your wife. Even then, I don't think she would want to sit there for an hour and listen to my voice. But. And, and Tyler, what's the name of the podcast? It's called The Happy Holy Hour. We well, just discuss things and big questions that exist in the Christian world. And usually some of the questions and discussions are things that people have questions and desire answers, but no one's willing to broach those subjects. Am I right in saying that, Tyler? Somewhat, yeah. They're, they're, they're questions that um, people wouldn't just be willingly addressing, and I, we don't know all the answers either. It's just kind of our conversations as we process those topics, not to say that we're right in, in every sense of the term or anything like that, but it starts with Scripture, right? That's where Amen. We, that's where we start and that's where we end. But um, because of that podcast, I do a lot of writing. And um, I started writing, I don't know what it's going to be. It's kind of like book length, but it's kind of just a long paper about the gospel and just all of the different episodes we've done that relate to the gospel. I've just been expanding out in written form, which is fun. It's actually been a really great intellectual exercise. You know, who knows if this will ever see the light of day, but I know it's been great for me helping me uh, understand my faith even more and dive deeper into the Word. It's just, been, it's just been awesome. And then also, like I mentioned earlier, we moved our wedding up because of health issues. That was That's a hard thing for us to do. And ultimately, it's we, we came back to this point of understanding that it's God who gives and it's God who takes yeah. away. And a lot of times we think about that in terms of our finances, which is absolutely true. But it's also true when it comes to our health, and <laughs> that can be a really challenging thing to understand. So although we knew that God was doing things in the life of you know my family with different diagnoses that happened in my family and the different diagnoses that happened in Sarah's family, uh, there was just a lot going on. Lots of highs, lots of lows, but throughout all this time, God generously provided meeting our needs, not only financial, but spiritual uh, and, and plus more, right? So just so thankful that God, that it's him who gives to us and, and knows what we need and uh, knows that when we have too much, maybe something that we don't need, he'll take it away to help us grow in our faith. And um, now that we're settling just to a, a more consistent routine as a couple, I'm excited to see how God uses us both in the thick and thin. 
to impact the church that we go to, his kingdom, and just see where he has us. So it's been a blast. It's been a really crazy year, honestly. Oh, crazy is the word I would use to describe it, but it was it was fun. And uh, am, I, am I right in saying, Tyler, you got pretty well hammered, you and your family, with COVID also? Yeah, that did happen. That did happen. We got So all five of us got COVID. My, um, my dad got it at work. His whole department and all of their families got this strain of COVID. And then, um, which included my family. So my dad was in pretty bad shape. He was in bed for like a week. My mom almost needed to be hospitalized because she couldn't breathe. I was having trouble breathing, um, chest pains and all that stuff. And then Brad and Austin, my two younger brothers, they were just having the joyful time. They barely lost their sense of smell. It was just, it was, <laughs> they were having a great time with it. You know, no oh, to be young. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, yes, yes. But, um, yeah, so just thankful the Lord brought us through that. We know there's, there's plenty of people that, um, plenty of Christians who were taken home uh, yeah. because of COVID and, and other people that have lost loved ones. And, you know, that's that's a really hard thing to deal with. And I'm, I'm thankful that the Lord had spared my family from that. But we're also not insensitive to know that this is a difficult and challenging thing for many people. Well, it looks like I'm I'm last in line here, and I'm okay with that. And uh, I'm, I'm going to just start off with my family uh, being thankful for. Cheryl and I, we've just celebrated this year. 35 years together and uh we didn't do an actual celebration this year we actually did it last year we were serving a church yeah in that foreign land called hawaii uh, with our life institute team so somebody had to volunteer to do that and uh so we my wife and i jumped in there and we did that and the church was gracious to us so gracious they gave us an extended time there where we were able to take an extra couple days there and kind of hang out and check out the sites so we really enjoyed that suffering for jesus huh well you know what i i figure through the years of pastoral ministry i'll i'll take that that one i'll take that hit i'll i'll, I'll gladly take that one so and just so thankful for her and her loving grace i think all three of us can say we don't deserve the love that we get from our wives and so grateful for that and i'm very thankful for my my wife's heart for the lord for the church for his work especially during our pastoring days um, there were some difficult and dark days, as I mentioned earlier, very difficult days as a pastor. And uh, again, I think I can speak for all three of us. Uh, we, I, married way up. Uh, who would have known that for, for me personally, meeting a girl in junior high would end up being our lifetime together. So, so grateful for that. <laughs> And uh, so we've, though we've been married 35 years, we've been together 42 years this year. So uh, yeah, I am that old. So she is not, but I am. <laughs> and I'm just thankful for her diligent and strong work ethic and willing to learn new skill sets and, and to help out financially. And she's now t part of the team here. She's actually uh, Life Financial Group's first power planner that came on the team there. That's right. And, uh, and she has been shining there and loving it. I'm very grateful also for my kids, my son, and my, my daughter. I like to call her, people technically tell me I have to call her my daughter-in-law, but she's just as much a daughter for me. Um, we live close to them, and we are so grateful. Both have transitioned into new jobs in the last year, and uh, my son is a CFO controller for a company that does measuring, measuring devices. And my daughter-in-law transitioned out of the dental hygiene uh, industry and more into dental sales and service, and she's doing a great job with it. And I love when they call me up and say, hey, we need some help with some homeowner tasks. Uh, I love connecting with them in that way. And, and then also my daughter who she is now six months left and she will be completing a double masters in English and creative writing. And she has been diligently working at that and very proud of her. Uh, not sure what kind of job you get with those two masters. Hopefully it's something that's going to pay bills. That would be a good thing. So, but we encourage yeah, her. You can't serve two masters. <laughs> You may not you may not be able to serve two masters, but they're giving them away if you pay enough money oh, for it. They're not giving anything. Oh, if away. you pay enough, they'll give they'll give it to you if you pay enough. So, but uh, yeah, that was good, Tim. I like that one. Good dad so, joke. Yeah, good dad joke. And he is a dad. So and. Uh, and then more, more so, my wife and I, we're very grateful for our granddaughter, Spencer and Emily's little girl. And as we mentioned in an earlier 
earlier episode, I have a new title as grandparent, and we love little Hadley Sophia. She is just a sweetheart. We actually spent some time with her just the other day. And uh, yeah, she didn't understand much at all. She's only six weeks old right now. But we just enjoyed hanging out with her. And Cheryl and I are looking forward to seeing her grow and just mature in the upcoming days. Do you know what your title is yet? Like, are you going to go by grandpa, papa? Great question. That was a big challenging thing within the family because it's a grumpy big, old big, man. Grumpy. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm going for grumpy now. <laughs> grandpa, <laughs> Reverend Drew Geisy. Yeah. Yes. It has to be the Ar- Reverend Grandpa uh, <laughs> Drew Geisy. You forgot Archbishop. You forgot that one or the most high. No, don't scrap don't that one. That. Just scrap that one. Scrap that one. So, but, uh, uh, Emily's dad wants to be called pop pop and my my dad was pop to my kids. So it's going to, I'm going to be called pop. Okay. So we're just going to follow the same suit. Pop goes the weasel. (laughs) Yeah, I guess so. Something like that. So we're, we're just loving seeing our little granddaughter just in these couple little weeks, just mature and grow. And so we're, we're looking forward to some fun there personally. Uh, just, uh, so thankful, Tim, you said it so well earlier, just our faith in the Lord and, God, his word, his salvation, that we have been counted as his children and he loves us. Um, I am so thankful that as I read the word, that there is going to be an imminent return and I can't wait for that day. I look for it each and every day. I'm thankful for friends that I personally get to connect with regularly. Some of you that are listening to the podcast And I'm sure you're going to say, hey, I heard you talk about me. Well, I'm very thankful because I got some good godly friends that I hang out with on a regular basis. And uh, we sharpen one another. We talk about cars and we talk about the Lord and life and stuff. So I just am thankful for friends like that. And uh, we also love hosting our friends at our place and make it a day of food, fellowship and fishing at our house. Then, you know, the three, the three F's food, fellowship and fishing. Good Baptist sermon. It's a good Baptist sermon. I'm going to have to work on that one. So, and health as I'm getting older, uh, the body's breaking down. Thank you, Adam. I'm, I'm telling you. And what I mean by Adam is Adam's counterpart, Eve. Thank you for the two of you. Uh, the body's breaking down between the aches and pains, between a sh- shoulder issues and lower back and swelling joints. I am still so thankful. I have mobility. I have energy. I just can't do things as quickly and easily and quickly as I once did. That is in Tyler and Tim's age. <laughs> so uh, the, these youngins are around me here. And I'm so thankful also for the home that we live in. Paid in full, no mortgage, very grateful for that. And uh, Tim, you didn't mention this, but we did something that you did also this year. We decided to retire our 1964 original kitchen in our home. And we we didn't just retire it. I think Cheryl imploded the thing. We kicked it to the curb. We kicked it. I think we kicked it to the burn pile. It was that bad. And uh, it was so needed. And Cheryl and I both, we were so grateful to actually get a fully functioning kitchen. And uh, it's one of those, one of those things that we are, you, you don't know what you don't have until you don't until you have something that's different and it just Mm -hmm. made a difference for Mm -hmm. us and made a huge difference for us. So we love where we live out in the countryside, away from the hustle and bustle of cities, towns, neighborhoods, and developments. And the property that we have, it's lush, it's green in the spring and summer. We got trees, lots of them. So I'll be picking up a lot of leaves soon. Um, We have a creek that runs across our property, and it's just fun to be able to just put my water shoes on and walk through it. Uh, Or my my dad was a fireman, so I have some fireman boots uh, that they retired. So I will go walking through the creek in that. And we have a pond on our property that we enjoy fishing and paddle boating. And just sitting next to it with a fire pit at, in a late evening and just enjoying just talking and connecting with either one another or with friends. 
and it's just been a fun thing. And another fun thing, it's weird, but you guys know me, uh, those that have listened, I'm somewhat of a motorhead. Okay, no, I am a motorhead. I'm so thankful for my garage. Little things in life that make us happy. And that's one of those luxury parts that we have in life. And uh, it's a place where I can go and do projects and enjoy and get dirty, greasy, work on the cars, tractors, which I'm thankful for my old car, motorcycle, tractor, and still being able to do all those physical things on my property. So, and to be able to have a good physical day of work outside, uh, I enjoy that. Work ministry aspect, I am so thankful for the pastors that we get to serve. We get to serve a lot of pastors, and between the Life Financial Group, Beacon Tax, and Stewardology, and Life Institute, we have that joy of pouring into pastors all across this country. Though, though the many, many conversations that we, we've had about their personal finances, taxes, and church budgets, along with many issues that they face there in the church, I'm grateful that we get a chance to come alongside to help them and even be an ear to them, even within the ministry aspects that many people don't understand that go through, that they go through, but I have been there and I can be an encouragement and a listening ear. So pastor, please know we pray for you and we will continue to do so. And if you would love a specific, uh, time of prayer, you, if you want to reach out to us, share with us a prayer request. We as a team would be more than glad to pray with you and for you and even do it confidentially. I am so grateful for the seminars that we have at churches. It's restarted since we've had the COVID and uh, the, the Stewardship Lifestyle Seminar by Life Institute. We're back. We, in fact, I was just at a church yesterday. We're going to be at a church this yeah, upcoming yeah. weekend. And this it, fall's gotten very busy with seminars. It, we went. We went from yeah. zero to one twenty real fast. Yeah, it was. And thank you, Lord, for that. And just exciting times. Things were shut down due to the intense pandemic well, days. You have to understand. Without those seminars, like we're not able to do our mission of helping Christians become even better stewards as well as we could without them. Yeah. And we really are grateful to the Lord that we're able to do that. Now. We are so thankful and we, do, we're meeting so many cool people while we're out there. So it's just fun hearing their journeys and what's going on in their life. So, and I want to add one more thing. I'm so thankful for the team here that I get to work with here in all mm-hmm. four divisions between Stewardology Life Institute, Beacon Tax and Life Financial Group. Uh, all of us are different, but we complement each other so well. And we bring to the table uh, different aspects of who we are and what we're capable of doing to complete different projects, to serve our listening audience and minister to churches and their congregations across this great land. I am so grateful for the diversity that we have here in in the people and their knowledge and skill set and just the joy that we have to be able to, as a team, work together. And yeah, then yeah. I, I got to bring in also just the, the team here at Life Institute that I get to work with, uh, to Tim, to Tyler, to Karen, uh, they, they have been such a joy to work with. I'm thankful that we get to serve the Lord together with the many ventures that we put our hands and hearts to together. So, you know, there's one thing that each of us mentioned as we were preparing for this episode, and we're all thankful for this podcast. Amen. Um, I've been thankful for the podcast for a number of reasons. I think one of the reasons is because I have so much fun doing it. It's it's just a lot of fun to get on the end of this mic here and to hash things out, to work things over. It's just been so much fun. And it's also been educational. Yes. So I, I, maybe, maybe I'm just vain, probably. But I actually listen to every single one of our episodes. I subscribe to our podcast i subscribe but i've only listened to a few of them i'm sorry you don't practice to preach brother so hey wait 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 i do i practice uh, what i uh, preach i just don't listen to it again (laughs) well are are you telling people to subscribe and listen and you're not no just kidding okay 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 i will listen from this day forward (laughs) so what what i'm what i'm trying to say is uh i've recorded these episodes with you drew 
Mm-hmm. And going back and re-listening to episodes, and, and you'll know uh, from from little hints we've dropped throughout the entire podcast episodes uh, to date, we record them several weeks, sometimes months in advance of when they're actually released. Yeah, just because our 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 schedule right here is so crazy with seminars and things like that. Well, it's we're also, not able to get in and and record every single week. It's also Tyler's fault. He, he's, he's, he's regimented. He's telling us we got to get, get things done at the right time. Right. So the point is that, that as I, you know, we've moved on in the podcast and I've moved on in my thinking. And now yeah. maybe months later, I come back and I listen to that episode when it airs and I'm like, huh? Yeah, actually, that was a good point Drew made, or that was, that was a really good point I made. I, I should really think about that a little bit more <laughs> <laughs> because it's, I, you know, it's, I, I personally am finding it helpful and, and encouraging to be encouraged in the Lord in this stuff. And that's just been, it's been a joy. To well, be I part. listened to our anniversary edition the other day. I was doing something else and I've just put that on in the background and I'm there like, Wow, that was really smart. What was said there? I really so maybe you got me hooked. I may have to listen to this new podcast called the Stuart Algy Podcast. I may have to jump in and become <laughs> tell your friends, tell my friends. Yes, <laughs> Tyler, you had some thoughts as well. No, I just think this is really this is a really great resource, especially for people that like all of us. You don't know what you don't know, right? So you have people that come alongside you, specifically right here with with Tim and Drew that talk about these things that you don't really think about all too much. Like uh, next week, I believe the conversation is based on life insurance and that kind of stuff. So, you know, how often do we ever think about those things? Seldom, right? So this, this is a really neat resource for people. Uh, well, and I'm excited to see how it's it funny goes you mentioned that because next week for us is different than next week for the audience. Next week for the audience is actually going to be um, with uh, the episode 62, right? You're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah, Creative yeah. ways to give to ministry. Yeah. 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 So that'll so, be a great episode. Going out of order a little bit. That's okay. <laughs> All right. So, one of the things that we wanted to, to wrap up this podcast with is just to share a passage of scripture about Thanksgiving that is meaningful for each of us. And mine is from Philippians. 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, listen to this next phrase, with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. We're to give thanks in all things. At all times. So when we come to God in prayer, so many times we're coming to God with just the bad things that are going, fix this problem, put out that fire, take care of this thing. We're Mm -hmm. like bossing God around. And the way we are to approach God in prayer is with thanksgiving, knowing that he is good and that he is even using the bad and difficult things, the fires, so to speak, in our lives for our good and his glory. And that has been so amazingly profound. And it is because of that, that the peace of God can surpass understanding when we approach God with a thankful, willing heart. Mm. And And God has just done that in my own life. I've seen several times when I've gone through crisis moments in my family with health situations or any number of of situations, God has been so faithful to that. And uh, I give him praise for it. Amen. Yeah, mine comes from John chapter 6. Not really a a typical Thanksgiving verse, but it's just a, a passage that I've been really thankful for. Lately, verses 35 through 40, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I say to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on that last day. Amen. Mm -hmm. I picked this verse because 
as we ponder what God has done in our lives, right? Whether we look on it with that sweet gladness or sometimes even bitter sadness, we know that our salvation in Christ is secure. God's got us and he will never let us go. And I think that's something to be thankful for. Amen to that. Well, I want to add one more thing before I get into my verse, and that is what we are thankful for. And we are thankful to you, our uh, our listening audience of Stewardology. We are so grateful that you take the time out, whether it's through your driving or projects around the house, whatever you're doing, but you have carved out time to listen. And our goal through this is to help you become an even better steward and to help the church move forward in becoming even better stewards of yeah. everything that God has given them. And we, I think I speak for all three of us, for the rest of the team mm -hmm. behind the mm -hmm. scenes. We are so grateful for you. We have seen the downloads increase over and yeah. over, and we can't say thank you enough for letting us be part of that. You, you know what I've really enjoyed is hearing stories of, of listeners who have been impacted by one thing or another. Yeah. Who have been, uh, I had one, one gentleman talk to me just, uh, just a couple days ago where he and his wife, after listening to the marriage discussion, yeah. were able to have some really helpful and fruitful discussions wow. in their own relationship and marriage. And it's been helpful for them just getting on the same page and having uh, new insights into what drives his spouse. And that was, that was really exciting to hear. Praise the Lord. And, and I can say the same thing. I'm mean, Tyler. You said this phrase moments ago, you don't know what you don't know, Tim, that's your phrase. I was just with some friends the other day. Well, I stole it from someone else. Well, it's, it's okay. <laughs> uh, well, they're get, attributing it back to you where he keeps telling his wife, he goes, well, you don't know. Tim says you don't know what you don't know. And he, well, who, what are you what are <laughs> talking about, Tim? And you, oh, Tim, it's Stewartology Podcast, Tim. You don't know what you don't know. So, And we're just so grateful for our listening audience. Now, I want to share a few verses. I couldn't just come up with one. I had to come up with two. One is my, my all-time life life first and that is jeremiah twenty nine eleven. for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future i am so so thankful that the lord has had and still has plans for me those plans are for my best interest even though i may not see it right away and that they are not to bring harm to me those plans bring about a sure hope and a future that is rooted and grounded in his presence uh, I am so grateful for that. And I have an assurance that through life that he is holding me, not just today, but in the future. And I, I just grab a hold of that. And then John 14, 3, it says, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. And I am so grateful and thankful that Jesus is preparing a place for me, that he's coming back for me, and that I will be with him forevermore. And this is because I am his, because I've trusted in Christ as my Lord and Savior for the, for the forgiveness of my sins and my only hope of heaven. And I'm so thankful, it tied in with that, that this world, it's not my home. I'm just passing through. And... Our prayer is for our listening audience that I just said it's a place, God's preparing a place for me. He's coming back for me. Really, it's for us. And I hope and pray that you have that same heart of thanksgiving unto our Lord for what he has done and what he will be doing for each one of us. Well, I'd like to thank you, every one of you today who's made it through all 50 some minutes of this uh this podcast Amen. episode uh rejoice with us in all that the lord is doing in his church and around the world uh if you have any stories of your own about ways in which lessons or particular episodes were a blessing to you and your financial situation go to the stewardology podcast and share those at stewardologypodcast.com and share those stories with us. We love to hear how these episodes are impacting your lives. If you have questions or ideas for future episodes, let us know that as well on the, the podcast website. Take advantage of your free stewardship review at stewardologypodcast.com forward slash review. And don't forget 
to look at all the other resources we have available on our website. Until next time, God bless. And don't forget, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Thank you for joining us on the Stewardology Podcast, where financial stewardship and theology meet. We'd like to help you take your next steps in biblical financial stewardship. First, subscribe in your podcast provider to get the newest episode delivered to you every week. Next, follow us on social media and visit our website at stewardologypodcast.com. There you can find our social media links and our entire episode archive. Remember, Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. See you next week on the Stewardology Podcast. Securities and advisory services offered through Genius Wealth Management, member FINRA and SIPC.